Happy Wednesday. We are back at it. Welcome back to Dynamics Unplugged and another edition of Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management. Today we are at the letter J and J is for drum roll, please. Job scheduling. Specifically, when it comes to manufacturing and production, what is job scheduling? Man, we could go a million ways with this and probably talk for hours. We're going to improvise a little bit and walk through the basis of job scheduling, how it can be used, some key implications, some key considerations in terms of what processes and features you want to use the system that may be impacted by if you are using job scheduling or not, and hopefully have some takeaways. So let's get started in the production control module. And under our setup, we have production control parameters. One of the areas we have here is our journals and our automatic and standard updates. If I skip to the automatic update tab, I have a default scheduling method. You have operation scheduling and you have job scheduling, J for job scheduling. Many people will give a basic definition around this. Operation scheduling is typically your longer term uh, full production plan. So if you think of an operation and a production route, a production activity, the operation is that total sum time of that operation ID. A job is more granular than that. An operation exists of process time or run time, but it can also exist set of setup time and queue time and transport time. So an operation is that sum aggregate. Jobs are those individual granular activities. So when you use job scheduling, you're actually breaking the operation up into those individual jobs, which has certain implications, because if you want to use something like manufacturing execution or the production execution interface, that would mean do you want to actually clock in independently to those jobs? Somebody clocks in to set up independently clocks out of setup and then process time and so on. And when it comes to features such as capacity planning, do you want certain types of those jobs to be capacity planned or not? So your default scheduling method that, that takes place, this would run, for example, if you firm planned production orders or planned batch orders uh, into real orders and firm them into a scheduled status. This is the method that would be used. This is also the method that would be used if you jump from an earlier status than scheduled uh, to a, a later status. Like you jump from estimated or created to started, the scheduling method that would be used in the background is pulled from, from this method, either operations or job scheduling. That also means then when you're posting things like your routes, you might be actually posting job cards instead of route cards. So regardless of when it happens, if you're usually job scheduling, you'll typically be creating and posting job cards rather than route cards, which is why I mentioned the journal. So you can see here there's default journal type set up for both route cards and job cards. And we want to make sure that if we have both set up and then somebody goes to manually create a card for time entry, they're using the appropriate journal type based on how we schedule. You can see there are production control parameters that can be set up by site as well. So if you have multiple sites within a legal entity, your method of scheduling could be operations and one and job and another. You might have job in a in a true manufacturing facility like a job shop or uh, a machine shop and then operation scheduling might be used in your kitting and assembly areas uh, that are in different buildings and different sites. Additional things under production control that we can see really right away is under our periodic tasks if we're running a batch job for scheduling. 
you'll choose the job that's appropriate with the type of scheduling you're going to do. Are you going to schedule the operations? Or are you going to schedule the jobs? Before I click on that, we'll take a look at a production route so you can sort of see the breakdown of where that information would come from and what would happen. We'll go ahead and we'll dive into the standard speaker route. Look at the route details. Of course, this one seems to have some error in setup cost category, but not really applicable to the data we want to look at. So here, if I'm looking at the assembly operation, that's an operation. A job would be smaller than that. If I look at my times, I have queue time, I have setup time, I have run time, process time, transit time, such. Those would be individual jobs. And if I were to do job scheduling, those times for each of those would be broken out. If I were to then schedule that production order, I would see those in the schedule. As I mentioned earlier, there are some key functionality differences when you're using job scheduling versus operation scheduling. One of them is under workspaces and production floor management. You may have seen demos or been excited about functionality that allows you to do a real time lookup of what production orders can be released based on inventory availability, essentially bill and material explosion. And that's modeled here by this production orders to release tile that opens a form to do those queries. This form is based on job scheduling alone. It is one of the prerequisites to use this form is that those production orders are on resources that are job scheduled against and you're using job schedule. So here we can see the warnings of which orders are could be released but have shortages highlighted by this warning icon, which orders can be released because they have enough inventory, hence the check marks. And then these question marks might be that there's um, a, an explosion or an update that might need to happen. Perhaps there's no bill of materials set up against that batch order or something that we would need to look into. So really important if you want to leverage that type of functionality, job scheduling is something you would have to consider. Another important piece to consider with job scheduling, as you can see here, the production floor management workspace highlights jobs rather than operations and people. And we can see those job listings here, similar to the other form I showed. But it also lists the Gantt chart. The Gantt chart is another form, another form a lot of companies like to take advantage of. It's a visual scheduling tool. It has drag and drop functionality. There's a lot of cool things about that and, and helpful and efficient things about that. However, you must use job scheduling to leverage the Gantt chart. Here is my Gantt chart, this particular View is the resource view. There are two views, as you can see, resource view for an entire resource or a single order view. So I start to expand the nodes. I can see the production jobs that are scheduled and where they fall in my schedule. And if I click on any of those cells, I can open up further information on them. So this production order process job here, I can see the start date of 3.13, start time of 6.30 a.m., calculated just under seven hours of process time for that particular order. And we can now see I've added more granular information. Again, if it isn't obvious, as I mentioned before, the differences between job scheduling and operation scheduling, the fact that I'm using a Gantt chart and see a resource view, but not a resource group view, and when releasing production orders from that tile in the production floor management workspace, you're releasing inventory and, and jobs to actual resources. Generally speaking, job scheduling is that short-term scheduling option, and it's at a very detailed level. Specifically, you're 
resources. It's assigning a resource if one hasn't been assigned yet versus operation scheduling, which only occurs against a resource group level. So if I have a bunch of interchangeable machines with operation scheduling, it doesn't matter which one it is when it gets scheduled. It's just looking for total capacity at that group level versus job scheduling that happens at an individual machine or assembly area, work cell, whatever it may be. That's one reason why some companies will use operation scheduling for the long term. And then once they get within, let's say a week or two of manufacturing, maybe they run a job scheduling job to take anything that's operation scheduled and look at what particular resources it will actually happen at based on availability of key people or taking into account machine downtime and holidays and things of that nature. All right, so let's go ahead and, and take a look at the actual batch job I shown earlier. And you can run the same scheduling process from an individual order, but I'll run it as if I'm doing it in mass. This would actually be updating job scheduling for existing production or batch order. So first I have my scheduling direction. There's lots of these. Um, a good J example from this group is actually backward from delivery date. That's a JIT, a just in time example where I want to calculate what is the latest I can make this production order based on the delivery date going from there and working backwards. When does it have to be available in stock in order to meet that delivery date versus something like find the earliest capacity starting today and just do it, right? Because you might be doing that, but uh, that's not necessarily building to a demand plan. That's just building to when you can make something. Lots of other options you could use. You also have further limitations you can apply with job scheduling. A lot of companies are looking at things like finite properties. Do we use more resource efficiencies and, and scheduling considerations for them and try to align similar jobs to each other, having properties on resources and aligning them to these jobs and specifically where they can happen versus just something like a generic resource group. And there you have it for another edition of Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Dynamics A to Z. Today we hit you with the letter J for job scheduling. Tomorrow we'll be back with the letter K.